Joel Embiid always finds a way to have good games against Andre Drummond and Whiteside. Well, it was Hassan Whiteside's turn last night. Embiid went absolutely off. He had 35 points, 18 rebounds, and look at the way that he's doing it. He's scoring the post. He's hitting threes. He just looked great. I mean, these moves that he's making, Hassan Whiteside got in foul trouble, only played 22 minutes, had five fouls, not too many points. Jalen Rose, this is Embiid's ninth. I'm going to say it again. Ninth game this season with 30 points and 10 rebounds. Nine 30 and 10 games for Joel Embiid. Has he turned a corner as a player this year? Well, him turning a corner is being available. Playing in back-to-back games. Yep. Playing a lot of minutes. Being somebody that they can count on to be in the lineup on a nightly basis. That's the change from the first couple of years of his career. We never doubted his talent. Nope. I talked about on this program the years that he was sitting out and then the year that Ben Simmons was sitting out saying people are not paying attention to what's about to happen when those two guys get to play together. It's going to be a problem. And that's what this guy is. He's a freak of an athlete because at his height with his bulk, it's one thing to be able to post and turn over both shoulders and be able to face up and shoot the ball. But it's a whole other thing to be at the three-point line, dribble handoffs, step backs, making threes, and actually efficient with it. He makes tough threes. Like, shout shout to Brooke Lopez, made a bunch of threes, but a lot of those are just kind of like catch and shoot threes. Like, Embiid makes step backs, he up fakes threes, and then creates space, and then shoots threes. Like, he does things from three. Like, seven-footers can shoot threes now, I get it, but he shoots, like, guard-like three-point shots. And I appreciate the fact that he's strategic with his battles that he's picking. And what I mean by is... He's opposing Andre Drummond and Whiteside, as you mentioned, because they function more as traditional centers. Mm -hmm. Neither one of those guys are beyond the three-point line making threes consistently. So he already knows that when I'm out here 25, 30 feet away from the basket, I'm open. You got to cover me. Yep. They got to cover me. You mentioned that Ben Simmons and Joel Embiid together would be a problem. And you would think that if you added a number one overall pick to that mix – that that would be, I don't know, one of the key pieces of the franchise. Well, guess what? Markel Fultz is not that. Here's Markel Fultz shooting a free throw. Mm. Jalen, that looked terrible. It looked terrible. And he said the ball slipped out of his hands. I don't believe him. We need Look more at this. I don't believe you need more people. Markel Fultz has been a supreme disappointment for this franchise. And when you add Jimmy Butler, he's not playing much. Is Markel Fultz career going to take a huge hit because of Jimmy Butler being added. Well, the expectations change. Like, Philadelphia went from a team that people acknowledged that Toronto and or the Celtics would be better than. Even the Bucks. To now saying, wow, you have three of the top one, two, three, four, five, six, three of the top eight or nine players in the whole game. Other than Greek Freak, Oladipo, Kemba, Kyrie, Kawhi, Tatum. Like, They have three of the top players in the entire conference. But the beauty of it is is in your question. That's why it's a team game. They still need their number one overall pick to perform. They still need J.J. Redick to knock down threes. And ultimately, if they're able to now integrate Jimmy Butler, which I know they will, one thing on the offensive side of basketball, they're going to be a terror defensively. They're going to do a lot of switching. They can do a lot of grabbing goals with steals and whoever gets the rebound. They're going to have a level of toughness and physicality and athleticism about their team. So I'm excited to see what's going to happen with this Eastern Conference race. Well, you talked about integrating Jimmy Butler, and Brett Brown spoke about that. Here's what he had to say. Quote, So to inherit him, to absorb Jimmy into our culture and in that locker room, I am fearless. I am incredibly excited because what I do know is he cares and he competes. And he went on to say... You take those two qualities and all the other stuff, I'll figure it out. I've got it. I believe I've got it. Translation, he's saying, I know Jimmy can be a problem in the locker room. I've got that. Do you believe Brett Brown can handle this? Absolutely. Here's a guy that has been at the forefront of coaching a basketball team that the world knew was tanking for years. Now they've turned a corner to be a playoff team to adding three of the top players to now – trying to put themselves in a position to be a contending team. Mm -hmm. So now he's looking forward to coming to work. Absolutely, this is a job that he would inherit, just like any other coach would for that matter. Of course, things are great in Philadelphia.